up lovies welcome back to my channel oh my god you guys i think it's been about like four months since we've actually had regular videos on this channel and i want to thank you guys thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the subscribers who are still with me who are reaching out who are giving me lots of love and support and all of those nice things either on the community page or on my instagram i'll leave it here you can follow my story you can see a lot of the things that i do sales that i do on instagram so be sure to follow me if you are not but we have a lot to talk about today i know i get a lot of requests about um the end of my pregnancy uh how did that go um i had my baby shower i really wanted to do like a baby shower diy because we've crafted everything and i it was just too crazy so i have little bits of my baby shower in here um the birth of jackson which is a wild story so i will get into that and all of those new things like what's been happening with me updates channel updates we'll go through that too i have a couple new segments that i think that you guys are gonna love so let's get on with our first witchy mama video intro one of the main new things that are coming for now and next year is going to be witchy mama now witchy mama um is something that i'm really passionate about and i know that not all of my um subscribers are either moms moms to be or like moms who are in kind of that developmental stage as children maybe some of your children are you know long have grown up are adults and things like that so that's okay and i hope that you can still watch and maybe gather some inspiration but witchy mom is going to be very tailored to um raising a pagan household and things you can do while you're pregnant and communicating with your unborn child um doing things magically to really tighten the bond between mother and child we're going to talk about things like my top toys for pagan toys um pagan books you know things like that i feel like we we have a, there's a lot of family channels out there and they're all amazing i, I watch all of them obviously but um, there's a lot of channels out there kind of regurgitating the same information, like their best, um, you know, three to six or their toys or, you know, things like that, where as what I would love to see more on the YouTube platform is witchcraft, like witchy mamas. What are we doing with our practice that we are handing down to our family? And that's kind of where it's, I want to really focus next year on is all of those things and a lot of those things you can still do with toddlers with older ones or just start new traditions even if your children are um, in the adult <laughs> ages so witchy mom is new for next year um, I'm going to be doing story time and putting them into witchy mom so uh, witchy moms can um, read or they can listen with my story times with their children. That's what it was meant to be in the first place. And um, story time is still happening. Um, the monthly magic is still happening. I'm going to be posting that video probably next week for the month of January. So I'm starting off monthly magic with January 2023. Like, it's all full of great information. If you want to check out my older monthly magic to see what that's about, you can. There's a playlist there. And I think that's it. Not too much happening for 2023 besides Witchy Mama and more of the same. I might not be posting as much. <laughs> I'm trying to still get my groove back. Um, I just started working full time. So um, Jax is about three months. So we're kind of going into that four month leap where he's having a lot. Uh, he needs a lot of attention. And I'm still kind of getting my feet wet with going back to work. So working full time, being a full time mom and trying to do YouTube is it's going to be a big struggle, but I want to make sure that I'm still giving you quality content for next year. Okay, so for the baby update, I will be completely lying to you if I said that my pregnancy <laughs> was easy, my uh, labor and delivery was easy. I mean, it's been challenging pretty much up until uh, like Jackson's second month or so. <laughs> um, 
a lot to kind of go over and I'm going to try to make it short. I got my list here and I think I'm at a point now where I can talk about it and really speak to you um, more like educationally or just have a clear head. I think if I was trying to explain to you Jackson's birthing story um, without getting emotional like a couple months ago or like when it first happened there was no way. I was just like a crying mess for a long time and I think it's so important for especially moms who have stories like this who are a little traumatic to kind of give yourself some time to heal before you share with the world, share with YouTube, share with your followers. I know that you guys want to know, but it took me it took me some time to uh, come to terms with the trauma that I had a little bit with Jackson. So I think I'm not going to cry, but we'll see. So the pregnancy um, was pretty good for the most part. So I'll show here that I had my... Um, baby shower it was a secret garden themed baby shower it was outside like near this huge willow tree um there was a river there that was right next to um the deck everything was flower themed we had the centerpieces were watering cans with beautiful um spring summer flowers in there we had teacup candles <laughs> my teacup candles that i made that had florals in them it was a very like rich in flower and growth and that's exactly kind of what I wanted for Jackson's baby shower so and it was hot as hell that day like it was so hot and I really love everyone all my friends and family who came like it must I think it was like 95 degrees and it was an outside event and everyone was sweating and <laughs> I know people were miserable but they were just like you've been through a lot and we want to support you and I love you guys for that so it was a beautiful baby shower besides it being hot and um, it was a true test to all the love that we got from our family and friends it was just incredible before my baby shower um, we when I was going to get my ultrasound we had found out that my cervix was opening and this is like semi common where your cervix is opening and you might need to take medication to keep it at bay so what was happening is that my cervix started to open which you know it's i'll leave a picture here so your cervix is like right kind of where your baby's head is if it's positioned down and it started to open so the doctor was like this isn't really the greatest sign <laughs> it's like right off the bat i think that was like 28 weeks pregnant or something like that like right off the bat like um she was saying that my cervix started to open and I had two options. I can either take medication to um, keep the cervix at bay and keep it stronger, or I can do a cerclage, which is a actual cervical stitch. So we chose the uh, medication and then the first week it was great. We were seeing good numbers and it wasn't expanding um, anymore. And then the week after it like kind of blew up a little bit. So we're like, Okay, before we keep trying and trying and trying and I have a risk of a premature baby or just a miscarriage in general, because I think at that point I wasn't completely cleared. So we decided to do a cerclage and a cerclage, I'll leave it here, is when they physically go in and stitch your cervix. <laughs> So like Jackson already kind of was like rambunctious. He wanted just to come out and it was way, way early. So I made the decision with my family and friends to do the cerclage. So, which is fine because after the cerclage, there's really nothing you can do. If it breaks, if your cervix still decides to open and he comes out, I mean, we would have had just dealt with it at that point. But it was kind of like, it was like a weight, a little bit of weight off my shoulders because I was scared to take the more medication. I didn't want to take harsh medications while I was pregnant with him. So at this point... It's all or nothing. So I did a cerclage and I was able to just enjoy the rest of my pregnancy because at that point I knew I was in good hands. I knew we caught it early and I kind of just like chalked it up to the gods and goddesses. Okay, so the baby started to cry. He's kind of in here now. So if you hear a little bit of crinkling, that's him. Um, okay, so where was I? Oh, so I was getting my ultrasound um, by my doctor and she said that I need to go to the hospital um, because she saw that my amniotic fluid was a little bit low and they just wanted to check. So 
I went to the I went to the hospital. They checked and they were like, um, so we're gonna see you tonight because uh it's time to take the baby out. So like I <laughs> I wasn't understanding. I'm like, um tonight? And then he's like, tonight. And I'm like, like today, tonight? And he's just like, tonight. It's happening tonight. And I was just freaking out. I didn't have the nursery ready. I didn't have like all the stuff ready for him. Like I was still kind of nesting like the, the changing tables and like just, I was freaking out. Like I called my best friend and I'm like, I don't have any of this stuff done. And I don't have like stuff set up for him. And she was just like, you will have time to do that. You just need to calm down and be in a good headspace because it's happening whether you're ready or not. So that was the 26th. That was the 26th that that happened. So I told my husband, we were freaking out. We were like, we have to hurry up and pack our bags. I didn't have a hospital bag packed. Like I had literally, I would say two hours to kind of get everything situated to like get ready to have this baby. And I thought I had like at least three more weeks for like, you know, I had to the end of my term and it looked, everything was going good. So I thought that I was, that was going to happen. No, it didn't. So then we get our bags packed. We go there. Um, I'll show some um, footage here, but like I was just so nervous, but yet so prepared. Like I, I didn't feel prepared, but I'm, I was like mentally, like physically I wasn't so prepared, but mentally I knew like I was just been looking for this moment, like literally for years. Like we've been trying so hard. We've been doing everything that we could and it's finally here. Like I was like, okay, now that I've come to terms that this is happening today and there's nothing else that I can do about it. Like I was so, so excited. Okay, so we are at the labor room. So this is the labor room. And then once um, I get induced then we will go to the delivery when the contractions are ready and it's time to have a baby How you feeling babe? I feel ready, but like it's It's just weird because it's just like Wasn't expected so yeah It's like your whole world just kind of stops, right? Oh, yeah like and like just being here is just strange. <laughs> just the idea that it's like any any moment now. Yeah. Any moment now. So we have to. Uh, we're gonna stay here. So this is. Oh. Sh so this is like the labor room. This is different than the delivery. So this is where we're gonna be. Um, just, um, I'm gonna sleep over. Um, got our bags. Got my hospital bags checked and stuff like that. But and we gathered everything. We cleaned out all the baby clothes and. We're really excited for our to see our boy and welcome our boy. So, um, yeah, we'll check in. in a so, bit. and then um, I got induced twenty six, and then um, the twenty seventh was actually when I had Jackson. So, crazy story, and this is when it gets really just insanity. Like I, I just happened to have COVID for the first time. Um, while this was happening i was about six days from my negative test result so i was feeling better everything was fine and i was really freaking out also that i was having a baby while i tested positive for covid a week and a half ago or whatever so because of that um when jackson was born um they i really couldn't see him but even more so um i was having issues pushing so um, we heard his heartbeat, everything was fine, but apparently the cord was wrapped around his neck and he was suffocating himself basically like coming out of the canal. So he was stuck in the canal for, uh, for like a little bit and that's when he lost oxygen. So when he was born, um, he I didn't even hear him breathing. I remember talking to Jesse and I'm like, I don't hear him breathing, I don't hear anything. So he was like, yeah, you're right. And then we just started panicking and then he started to cry. But because of all of the oxygen that was kind of um, lost coming through the canal, we had to immediately put him into an incubator. So I didn't get to do um, skin to skin. I didn't get to touch him. I barely got to see him. When babies like that are born, they need some type of treatment with like cooling. So he was put on like a cooling, I forget the, the technical term for it, but um, he was going to be put on a cooling mat 
for a few days. <laughs> she has so much to say. Um, he was going to be put on a cooling mat um, to lower his immunity to combat all of the things that come with low oxygen, which is it could be um, convulsions, he could be going, you know, he could be having um, the seizures and things like that. So where we gave birth they didn't have that kind of um that kind of service so they didn't have the cooling mats they didn't have a NICU that had all that stuff the only place that they offered this service was literally an hour away from our home so Jackson had to get airlifted <laughs> into a helicopter and flown about an hour from where we were so let me just recap I gave birth to my son. I didn't get to hold him. I didn't get to see him um, because of COVID. Um, they had to put him in another room and also because of his immunity and lack of oxygen, I couldn't see him. So before he got airlifted, I wanted to see him and, and um, all the uh, the flight attendant and the actual person who was who was flying the helicopter said, we're not allowed to do that. We can't, you know, we have to take him straight there. Thankfully, my nurse was on my side and she, she was like, no, the parents have to see him like for more than a second before he gets, you know, whisked away to another hospital an hour and away. So they were like, okay, okay, fine. What we could do is that when he's in his incubator, um, we'll wheel him by the door. We have to stand behind the door, like behind the actual door frame and just wave high and then for like a second and then they whisked him by so it was me and jesse jesse was just kind of holding me from behind we said our goodbyes and then from then i just i just was wailing like i just remember i was crying and crying and crying i didn't want to talk to anyone i didn't want to talk to my mom i didn't want to talk to friends i didn't want to talk to anyone like i was just in complete an utter just pain if that makes any sense like I was scared that I didn't know what was gonna happen to him I was nervous for him to go into a helicopter with so much loud noise when he was so comfortable in the womb like I I was just so distraught and so in pain emotionally it's just like sad <laughs> I thought I wasn't gonna cry but Sad is just an understatement. I was in complete, I've never been in pain like that in my life. Like I was just screaming. So um, he was sent to Allentown NICU, which is about 45 minutes an hour uh, away from us, from the hospital that where I gave birth to Jackson. So this is <laughs> it's just like worse comes to worse. So um, because of COVID, um, I they had really strict regulations i was like even if i take a test and it's negative can i still see my son they're like no you have to be 10 days out in order to even come into the hospital to come see him so i gave birth to him on a saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday like was just anguish like until i can reach my 10 days all i can do is see my son through a monitor which i'll leave here i think it was called like angel angel eyes or something like that it was an app that was connected to the NICU and that was the only time that I could see my son I just like I wanted to hold him so bad I wanted to hold him so bad and I wanted to just like see him and talk to him so because of the cooling, they had to like really cool his body down. And I just remember one night I just lost it because I was looking at him through the monitor and I, he just looked like he was shivering and I just lost my shit. <laughs> I just like lost my mind. And my husband, thank God, he was like my complete rock. He was just like, let's put this, <laughs> let's put this away. Let's put the phone away. Let's turn off the app because if you would just leave it up to me, I would just be staring at the app all night long. Like I just wouldn't even sleep. So, oh my God, thank God they had that service because, um, I, I got to see my son at least. Could you imagine if I didn't even have, they didn't have that app or they didn't have him kind of, uh, recorded, uh, 24 hours a day. Um, yeah, so 
he I'll leave some I'll leave some videos here he needed a lot of work because of the major loss of oxygen and I had to talk to a lot of specialists a lot of doctors about like he can have this type of trauma and he can have be delayed in this kind of way and don't be surprised if he's not you know having his his you know motor skills and his reflexes like the same as all the other babies like just don't be surprised if they are there are developmental issues with him because of this so um but i just i kept i kept praying I, and then i just asked them just to kind of watch over him i've done some spell work for protection things like that and you know kind of by the grace of god like we were able to get some really good results we had eegs done that's the picture with his little cap um the first one there were some questions and i just i'm telling you I just, I just remember just being home and waiting. Like I had no phone by me, just waiting for the doctors to call me to let me know about like the EEG um, results, like any results. Like I just wanted like progress, and every every single call was a little bit of progress, and a little bit of progress, and a little bit of progress. So, um. We get to the NICU and like finally we get to the NICU and it was just seeing him for the first time like after literally five days after I gave birth to him was just it was just the best feeling ever like and I just when I start when I saw him bits by bits were coming off like little things were coming off of him and more like IVs were coming off of him and I, I knew that things were gonna be Whitney are you smiling oh big yawn That was at the NICU and um, it was like another week in the NICU after he was sent there like it was like another week actually when I when I was able to <laughs> Do you guys hear fart? Um, after I you know was at the NICU I got there he was there for like another week so I was there every day I slept over the first couple days and like I was exhausted, but I just like wanted to be with my son, like just as much as I could. I was like literally there almost day and night, just on that seat, just reading to him, like trying to pump and learning how to pump and breastfeed and things like that. It was just, it was such a surreal moment that I, it's just one of those things that I'll never forget. I, I can't believe I'm still getting emotional because so much time has passed and Jackson is such an amazing baby, but it's really, really sad. Um, how much of a connection how much like deep deep into your soul how much you can love something it's it's incredible okay so so we get to make you we get him out he is good i'll show a picture of um his coming home he was so tiny oh my god he was so tiny at this point but um like he like barely fit in his like little mini um car seat so we take him home and then the first night was you know okay a second night but then uh the anxiety kick in and i think i had a lot of anxiety issues because of so much trauma like i can't even tell you guys like i'm really skimming the surface of like how i felt because i don't want to get i don't think you guys need to just go too deep into it but the amount of trauma that like i went through with trying to push him out to him getting wrapped up to him losing his oxygen to him going and getting air freighted not seeing him in the NICU cooling down potential like seizures I would it's just so much trauma so I really I already kind of suffered from a little bit of a little bit of anxiety but after him the first few weeks after taking him home was a mess I was a mess like I was trying to keep it together and I thought that I did a pretty good job with like waking up every two hours and cleaning bottles and cleaning 
um, pumps and pump parts and doing this. And then, like, after I'm done cleaning everything, it's time for him to eat again. Like, literally working off of, like, 45 minutes of sleep every night. Like, I think the mixture of that and the uh, PPA, so I had postpartum anxiety. I'm pretty sure that I was suffering from that. Um, I was really not doing good. Like, I was in a really dark place. So, but with my husband telling me it's going to be okay and he kept working with me and working with me. I was meditating. I was working, you know, I was working with my practice. And this is the type of things that I want to bring to pagan mamas. Like if you are going through some postpartum anxiety, what are the things to combat that? Because I went through that. Some postpartum depression. What are some of the things that you can do to kind of quiet the mind? Because I, my, my hormones, my feelings, my anxiety were all over the place. And it's so easy to slip into such a dark place that you just don't want to go. So, um, while we were in the hospital, actually, when we were filling out his, his birth certificate and his name, they asked us, um, does he have a middle name? And until that very day, even when he was, after he was born, Jesse and I just couldn't agree on a middle name or we just didn't know what to name him. And then I saw or we saw a name that was like, that's it, it's perfect. So his name is Jackson, J-A-X-E-N, and his middle name is Emery, and Emery means uh, being strong and resilient and hard times and challenging times, and I'm like, that's it. His name is Jackson Emery, and that's, that's what we're going with. So that was his middle name. So that's pretty much the birthing story of so much like between the cerclage and the birthing story and taking him home and going through COVID, it was just like I, I, I was not expecting this. But even even with that, I had an amazing pregnancy. I had it was great. I never got truly truly big. Maybe because I was like almost three weeks, three and a half weeks early. But I never I, my my belly stayed pretty tight, pretty cute, and so like I never had issues. Um, besides me having pain in my wrist and my feet blowing up. I never really had issues with not sleeping or anything like that. I never had like really weird like food aversions, nothing like that. I had a pretty easy pregnancy. I will show you him or you can, again, you can um, hit me up on Instagram. I, he, he's all over the place on Instagram, but and I know you've seen him on some of my community posts, but I'll officially let you meet him when I do the nursery tour. A lot of people are asking for nursery tours, for Book of Shadow tours, and that's all happening, you guys. But again, I'm probably trying to push out one video a week because it's it's just hard like it's really hard and I'm, I'm really like the time that I have for myself like just putting on makeup doing my hair a little bit like cleaning my studio where I now film and do things and my spiritual work keeping this clean my my studio clean doing orders from the apothecary shop which is really blowing up Jason's apothecary on Instagram is and Etsy is really taking off like I'm really happy that everyone's loving the products and they're helping them with their spiritual journey so Jason's apothecary him a full-time job YouTube like I'm probably gonna be pushing out I hope a video a week and I used to do like two a week and make these super long videos they're gonna be more short hopefully and probably once a week so that's what's coming up and I told you about the updates for the sh for the channel and that's basically it so I really hope that you guys um, enjoyed my story I hope that you find some inspiration I hope that um, if you are someone going through this um, it, it does get better and I wish you all the best and I cannot wait to see what comes for next year and I will see you in the next one bye guys